the next episode of the Performance Kitchen. I'm Zara, and today we are joined by former Olympic diver Blake Aldridge. Blake is seen diving off very high cliffs. He's a Red Bull cliff diver. So let's get Blake on the show. Come on in, Blake. <laughs> All right, how are, how we doing? are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. So what are we cooking today? Um, we're going to cook a little bit of sea bream with a little salad garnish and some vegetables. Sounds lovely, sounds lovely. And why have you chosen this dish? Um, for me, it's kind of a feel-good food. If I've had a really heavy training session and I'm tired, um, I have this and I wake up the next day and I feel quite refreshed. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's the, what's the first thing we need to do? Um, I think start off, with, we'll, um, we'll chop up the potatoes nice okay. and small because they're probably going to take longest in the oven. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we'll score up the fish, a little bit of salt and pepper, lemon, um, bung them in the pan with a little bit of oil, fry them up, and uh, then we'll create the salad, which doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. Very healthy. <coughs> so, Blake, you're a little bit poorly, aren't you, today? I am, yeah. I've, uh, I took a little bit of a hit in, um, in France at the last event, and so... Uh, I've got a little bit of a cold. This knife's obviously the sharpest one in the kitchen. Yeah, you're slicing, <laughs> you're slicing that fish. So has, has food always that. been a big part of your, your life then? To be honest, it wasn't, a massive, it wasn't a massive part of my life until um, I went to Australia and I was, after I won the World Championships when I was 17, um, I went to Australia to train for the 2000 Olympic trials. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the people that I was staying with um, was actually the performance director of, of British Diving at the time, Steve Foley. And um, his wife, Anna, basically started teaching me how to cook because I didn't have a clue how to cook. And I found it really therapeutic and, um, and really, enjoyed, really enjoyed cooking. And, and I've been doing it ever since, but in the build up to the Olympics, um, we worked with a nutritionist for a long period of time. And so um, if I had known what I learned from the nutritionist before the Olympics beforehand, I probably wouldn't have had half of the injuries that I had. Really? I mean, food is so important um, to recovery and yeah. injury prevention. And then, so you switched from the Olympic diving. At what age did you move over to Red Bull? Cliff diving. I, um, I went to the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and uh, I retired from I retired from the Olympic diving in 2010. I think the main reason was we had a bit of a bad Olympics and um, it was our worst event out of all of the events right. that we'd done that year. We was, um, we was world number three and we won um, the British leg of the World Series so we'd pretty much beaten everybody that we was up against at the Olympics. And um, it took me 12 years to get there. Um, 2000, I was third in the trial, made the score, but you had to be top two individually. Then another four years, picked myself up and uh, carried on 2004, third in the trial, made the score, had to be top two. And then 2008, um, one trial with Tom in the synchro and, and went to the Olympics. That year we, we won, I think we had 13 competitions, we won 10 medals. And our worst performance was the Olympics. So for me, it was... Um, it was a lifetime's work to get there, and, uh, and it, it's just one day, and that day everything has to go right for you, and you're in a field of such good competitors that are also competing against you that you put one foot wrong, and yeah. you can go from the top to the bottom. I mean, we dropped from second place down to eighth place within one dive. So, um, yeah, that was, that was frustrating for me, and um, I decided after that that I'd had enough, and I wanted to see the world a little bit more and, and have a new challenge, and... Yeah, I moved into, moved into the Rebel Cliff Diving, and boy, is that a challenge. Do you eat before a big, a big dive? So you're obviously 27 metres high. Are you jumping on an empty stomach, or do you need a lot of carbs? What, what happens? Well, um, generally, um, generally for the cliff diving, we, um, we have a training session before we compete. And um, so you, you generally have a pretty small breakfast. Um, I normally just have a couple of poached eggs or boiled eggs, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's about it for breakfast. And then you have a really small lunch because you're going to be um, you're going to be you. <laughs> do you want me Resorted to give? Do you to want me to give them a whack? Yeah, we will have a, generally a really small breakfast and then a pretty small lunch because pretty soon after lunch you start training, and then you go straight from training into the competition, and then from the competition you'll you'll have 
three or four dives, 14 divers. So, you know, that, that can last a few hours. And then a lot of the time, by the time you finish, um, you're, you're absolutely famished. But mm. What would you be eating when you finish competing? Do you have a big meal? Would it be like protein or, you know, pasta? Um, what, what are you filling yourself up to with? Be honest, um, to be honest, myself, I enjoy to, to have like something quite stodgy, quite full. Um, but it's very difficult to step uh, to stay on a sort of strict a strict diet as mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. when you're living out of a suitcase in hotels. Yeah, it must be must you know, be it's, hard it's to control. It's very tough, and you and you just um, you just need to try and get what you need as and when you can. Yeah. Um, during during the tour. I need to just to put this back in here because I'm having a mare. <laughs> Um, okay, now I'm, gonna I'm, put that in, I'm just going to chop up some okay. spring onions. The, the potatoes can actually go in the oven and then I'll add the, the spring onions a little bit later. Should I put, the, should I put them in the oven? Okay, yeah. They are going in. So you're in your, you're in your sixth season of the Red Bull World Series? Fifth, I think. In your fifth? In, yeah, in total, I think it's... Um, been on it since 2011. I was a wild card. Ooh, wild card. Um, yeah, so they invited me. I won the, I won the um, European Cliff Diving Championships, um, which was only from 20 meters. I say only. Only. It's, it's still, it's still high enough. But um, the difference between 20 and 27 or 28 is um, trans transforming and transitioning from the Olympic diving into the high diving, to go from 10 metres to 20 metres, is exactly the same sort of takeoff speed okay. as your dives that you would do from the 10 metre. Whereas when you get to 27, 28, you've got to slow everything down and it's very difficult to judge when you're coming out of doing everything, every takeoff 110%, to then standing up there and just having to sort of like mosey off, you know, and be everything in slow motion. So that was a really hard adaption for me to to get to grips with, with the first two years, I was pretty much out of control because um, because I was just so fast on, on on all of my takeoffs. So that was the hardest thing to transition from one to the other, and then obviously landing feet first and being three times the height as opposed to ten meters and landing head first all my life. Yes, you're almost doing the opposite of what you what you used to. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, technically, it's very similar. Similar sort of dives, similar sort of aerial um, tricks. You just add the uh, the end part of the dive. The, the difficult thing is that there's nowhere for me to train. So I do everything from a, a 10 metre board. That's such a good point. It's uh, not like you've got yeah, cliffs Yeah, there's not cliffs the anywhere. No, yeah. exactly. And, um, and that's one of the big problems with the sport, really, is um, there's not really any training facilities. There is a place in Austria called Area 47, um, which is like a, an extreme outdoor playground, extreme mm. park, um, but it's in the Austrian mountains. So our season runs pretty much from May through to October. So where, where do you go in the off season yeah, that's yeah. warm yeah. And, uh, and you can train? There, there isn't really anywhere. I've been working on a project in in Dubai for the last five years trying to get a platform, an indoor platform built. Um, managed to get as far as the architect that built the pool um, doing the designs and everything, but to try and get somebody to see the benefits and, and to invest is, is very difficult. But I mean, if it, if it were to happen, it would be fantastic mm. for the sport. So come October, what do, you, what do you do in your off-season? And what are you eating in your off-season as well? Does your diet change? To be honest, I'm, I'm a little bit like Ricky Hatton in, in, in that sense. Um, I, I like to have a, a nice rest, a um, few months off, really not think about what I'm drinking, what I'm eating, um, put on a little bit of weight, get pretty unfit. Um, but it, if I didn't do that and, uh, and I stayed on that, sort of run of being being a competitor all for all of that time I think I'd get I'd get bored of it and sure. and I and I wouldn't enjoy it I think it's very difficult to find a good balance with 
with sport and um, competing and, and, then, and then your off time. You know, as, as a competitor, you don't really switch off. So for me to switch off, I need to completely switch off to, to get away from it. And um, yeah, in, in a way that helps me when I go back, because I go back and I go back in intense because yeah. I'm like, oh, I feel like rubbish. You yeah. know, I, I've not done any exercise. I've put on weight. I don't feel fit. But then when I start, then I'm really, I'm really into it and I hit it as hard as I can. It's that and added that, motivation, isn't it? Now my eyes are watering. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me cry. I tend to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah, so everyone needs that, that downtime, don't they? You know, holiday, whatever you're doing yeah, in, in your life. It's easy, it's easy to forget that, um, that you want to have a little bit of time off, mm. you know, and you've got, you've got to be pretty, um, you've got to be pretty selfish with um, with things, commitments and, and stuff that are related to, to diving. There's there's a lot of opportunities that come in the off season, and uh, and to be honest, it's like you've just spent the whole six months travelling around the world, and um, and then somebody wants you to go and do um, an event somewhere that's not Red Bull, and, and it's just sometimes you just have to be realistic with yourself and say, you know. I, I've, I've got the next series yeah. the following year to prepare for. I need to rest the body and have, have a little bit of time off. You have to say no, basically. Yeah, and, and it's hard. I, I mean, I don't like saying no, but um, when, it, when it comes down to it, it's say no and let your body heal. Mm. Uh, normally, by the end of the tour, everybody's got niggles, everyone's got injuries. You know, we're hitting the water at 95 kilometres an hour, so your body really that does is take some a pound. That's isn't it? So it's all looking okay. very pretty. So we've got the salad and yeah. the. Okay, and there's the fish about to be about to be fried. Is that the, the next fish step? is. I'm going to fry the fish in the in the pan, mm -hmm. um, just to just to blacken off the skin a little bit, and then I'm just going to stick it in the oven to, to cook through. Um, so, is there anything I can do? I can help with. I'm going to put these on here, and then I'm going to cut up some more and put them in with the potatoes when the potatoes are nearly done. Okay. Um, and I'm going to keep one to wrap up at the end. Right, let's get this fish in the pan. I'll do one at a time, I think, because they're pretty big. Yeah. I just love fish. Yeah, it's me too. It's so good for you, isn't it? And it's, su it's such a light food, you know. It, you, if, you eat, if you eat a big steak, I mean, I do love my, my meat as well. But um, the fish is just such a light food. When it What's your cheat meal when you're off, when you've got your off season? What's the, like your guilty pleasure? To be honest, I don't really eat that bad. Um, sometime, Come on, you must. Sometimes, uh, sometimes a kebab, um, but then not like a doner kebab. It's normally a, a chicken kebab, mm -hmm. um, a little bit healthier. Mm. Um, Kebabs are good. You go, you've got your healthy salad and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never eat them. But I, um, I don't know, a lot, of the time, a lot of the time when I'm in an airport after an event, travelling from event to an event, um, I'll get something quick and easy, a Burger King or, or a McDonald's. I know it's terrible, but you know, it's, just, it's not that I eat that all the time. I hate it, eating it, but it's just something quick while you're on the go mm. when, you're, when you're checking in from one place to another. Exactly. Okay, so fish is going to go in. Yeah, fish is going to go in the, the oven. Do the honours and open up. Thank you, thank you. Oh, whoa. Smoky. Yeah. Um, right, cherry tomatoes. Do you want to cut them in half yeah, for us? Yeah, sure. Have we got a nice bowl that we can put the put the salad in? I'm sure we can arrange a nice bowl. So where where are you training? I train at, base? I train at Crystal Palace Diving Club um, in Crystal Palace, South London. Mm -hmm. um, I've been training there since the age of five. It's where I first done my first oh. dive. Um, Got a great, uh, great little team there of, of kids. Um, the coaches still, the people that run the program are still the people that All coached me years ago. Yeah, I mean, there's Lovely. new coach. I've got a Chinese coach now, but um, yeah, I still see everybody. Um, it's really nice to go back mm -hmm. and uh, give some of my experience onto the kids as well, and, and help coach them. Okay, uh, a little bit of salad. Done. Do I need to chop this up, or is this um, staying here? That's going to stay there. Okay. Exactly. Not many restaurants you get 
a wonderful sea bream with bits of, bits of lemon inside. That's that is it. pretty special. No, I, I think home cooking, you can't, you can't beat a bit of home cooking. Um, as I said earlier, I love my meats as well. I really do enjoy um, a good steak. Mm -hmm. But I think there's no, there's no better way than, um, than going down to your local butcher. I mean, I live in, um, I live in Horsham out the way, so um, I'm in the countryside. Mm. There's loads of really nice um, fresh produce that you can get and um, go down to your local butcher, get a lovely cut of meat. You know, a, a steak fillet is my, um, is my favourite, really. Or ribeye, because it's really tasty. Get a nice bit of meat, they, they'll cut it for whatever size you want, and then you can take it home, you can make them as thick as you want or mm. as thin as you want. Mm. Um, and yeah, you can't beat a steak at home. And you cook it and you sit down and you eat it. And I cook for my mum a lot, to be honest. Um, she's followed me around my whole career. And, and, uh, and so has my sister. And um, yeah, we, we're, we're a pretty tight family and we spend, we spend a lot of time um, sitting down and I cook and they enjoy. Is this gonna go in here and we're gonna put this back in? This is gonna go back in the oven. Can we pop it in? We are nearly good to go. Pop this back in the oven quickly. Right, okay, ready? Ready? Yep, here we go. Fish smells really nice. Yep, they're looking good. And they've got their tails on. Yeah, and, and their, their heads. heads. <laughs> the reason the reason that I like to leave the whole fish like that and just have it gutted in the middle is um, I just find it it makes the fish a lot tastier. Okay. Um, Yeah, and I didn't know until quite recently that the little cheeks in the sea bream, you can dig them out with your fingers if you're not too squeamish. Oh. And, um, and they're delicious. The little cheeks? Really, really delicious, yeah. There we go, I didn't know that. Bit of olive oil. Right, so the salad's good. I normally cover that up and stick that in the fridge, but we're, uh, we're nearly done, so we don't need to do to that. Up. So I've got this plate here. Might I can't remember if I put salt on that or not. <laughs> Why not add some more? Yeah. Why not? A bit more salt. Right, getting that out now? Yeah, we are good to go. Ooh. This smells good. sizzle so get one of them like that this is a little posh trick we love a posh trick on this show come out the way <gasps> look at that there we go there's one that has never been done <laughs> Yet. Well, let's see how good you publicise it and see if everybody else starts coming in here and doing it. <laughs> yeah. Shall I get the potatoes out? Yeah, if yeah. you can. Be careful, they're yeah. boiling hot. Comes coming behind you. looks really good. I'm very excited to try it. It's so pretty. Plenty of food, huh? Plenty of food. You said you like lots of food, so. I do. Um, achieve that. Potatoes. Okay, that's that's for you. Yeah. I will move this out of the way. And take that off you. Okay. Teamwork, teamwork. Yeah. Look at this. So
So if you're watching the stomach line, only a little bit of potato. If you don't care, you can have loads. <laughs> Would you have this for lunch or would you have it for dinner? Lunch or dinner, um, depending on whether I was having a big training session or not. Um, if I was having a really big training session in the gym, I'd have this pretty early on and then go to the gym a few hours after. Mm -hmm. um, or again, have it after, after yeah. the gym, if I've had a tra heavy training session. Okay, and then we'll just put a little, little bit of salad. A little bit of salad. This is a feast for... For a thousand people. Or the sponsors. <laughs> or that. <laughs> Looking lovely. There we go, voila, finito. Boom. And then uh, a little bit of lemon, Ooh. a little bit of lime. And that right. is my sea bream. What do you call it? It's got to have a name. Blake's bream. Blake's Bream. <laughs> Love it. What a beautiful little dish we've got here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it, see okay. if it uh, lives up to as good as it looks. Oh, look at this fish. You just pull that off the bone so oh. easily. Beautiful. We had a little bit of the uh, salad as well mm. in there. You made this look so easy as well. Mm. Well done. Mmm. Pretty tasty, huh? Very lemony as well. Now, you were saying about the cheek. Yeah. As so being the best bit. I think it's the tastiest part. Best way to do it is to just, are you ready for this? Mm. Just get your You're having it. Just get your finger in there. And that is the meat of the cheek. Oh my gosh. Well, it's just different class to the rest of the fish. Wow. So tasty. Thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. If you want to check out more Performance Kitchen episodes, then find us on social media or follow us on our channel. Thank you for watching.